Now, moving on, every passing minute brings in more shame for the HS2 debacle, as a newly published report finds the London to Birmingham leg, known as Phase 1, could bring in as little as £1.10p for every £1 spent on the darn thing after completion. Meanwhile, regional mayors Andy Burnham and Andy Street have announced they're looking into alternative funding methods that do not rely on public funding after Rishi Sunak scrapped Phase 2 last year. That's the bit that goes from the West Midlands to Manchester. Joining me now is rail expert and historian Christian Walmart and a resident of Lichfield as well, Chris Wilkinson, who's had his life turned upside down by the chaos of the now abandoned Birmingham to Manchester line. Uh, welcome to both of you. Christian, let me start with you. Um, how does that compare, that £1.20 for every pound spent, to the rest of the railway? Because the last time you and I spoke, we were moaning on about how much money it was costing the annual sort of taxpayer bill to keep all of these different artificially inflatable private companies going? Uh, well, Mike, I think, actually, you've um, overestimated the value there. Uh, the, the £1.20, it's, it's more like 80p or 75p oh, in really? a lot of cases. Mm. Um, so so uh, you've like actually all. been too optimistic about <laughs> it. Um, uh, you know, in fact, I mean, this is, this is just going to get worse. I mean, the point is that they've ended up with a line that I've called the Acton to Aston Shuttle. In other words, it goes from West London through to just about uh, the centre of Birmingham. Mm. Um, and uh, they've recognised, and that you, you've got your figures from the Public Accounts Committee report today, they've recognised that that is an absolutely useless concept, that um, unless they finish it to Euston or actually do build a bit that they've just cut out through to Crewe, um, Nobody much is going to use the line, and right. it doesn't have a business case at all, which is where you got your figures from. So, uh, you know, they're, cut, they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Either they kind of spend yet more billions uh, on building it, or uh, they have this absolutely useless line. Well, I mean, it is an absolutely useless line. And, I mean, I think when we spoke uh, last time, Chris, um, we found out from you that you've had your life sort of turned upside down um, and, in fact, you've had no benefit. If anything, life has got even worse. What's it been like the last few weeks since we last spoke? Well, uh, since then, the shop that I uh, managed has actually closed down because of Blimey. lack of football. Uh, there's hardly any traffic coming up the A38, so... Unfortunately, we've had to shut, and I've got that fed up with it that I've taken the decision to move uh, down to Burton from <laughs> Litchfield. OK. Uh, because I, I've just totally had enough of it at this point. Yeah. And uh, the economic opportunities are there, so I'm going to take them. Yeah, I think that's a very, very good... And there will be other people like you, in, presumably, in the same kind of uh, situation, where, um, you know, because you can't get to work or because you can't find work where you are, because it's all been ripped up and sort of, uh, you know... Uh, messed about with, you have to just move out. Yeah, I suppose in a sense I've been pushed to the more extreme end of it. Um, most people could probably stomach uh, a few extra minutes on the commute, but when things are doubling or trebling yeah. and it's taken over an hour to get to work each day, you kind of think, well, you know, I can't really do this day in, day out. Um, particularly when we're opening a shop late, mm. uh, it's having a real impact on trade. Well, exactly and, uh, right. Because if, if you can't get to the shop that you're working in, presumably neither can anybody else who wants to buy things there. So you end up basically destroying all those businesses. And, Christian, let me come back to you. I mean, these are the kind of hidden sort of dangers of HS2, aren't they? The way that HS2 has kind of just ploughed this great furrow up the country and large bits of it now aren't ever going to be finished. Yeah, no, I'm absolutely incensed about, uh, in particular, uh, Euston, near where I live. Um, is now a desert. They right. demolished uh, a, a very good uh, block of council housing. They demolished a hotel. Mm. They demolished a, a pub that I used to patronise sometimes. Um, and uh, it's now an absolute wasteland. And uh, your pictures are showing, you know, the happy kind of new bits they're building. Your picture should actually show the devastation of, mm. of Houston and the devastation right. of uh, their the area... Uh, uh, also north of uh, 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 um, Hansacre, where, where your uh, other uh, yeah, uh, guest is, yeah. um, right. which, which has actually been devastated by uh, the, the, the land grab and mm. uh, the demolition. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I'm just, I just think it's uh, one of the big scandals of all time. All right. 
Well, also, the whole Euston area has been turned into a massive traffic jam because nobody can get in and out of Euston. There used to be a car park there that you could park your car in if you were dropping people off or picking people up. There isn't one now, so instead, everybody has to wait around by the side. Eversholt Street, I know this sounds a bit local for people who are not from London, but, you know, um, Euston Station itself is an absolute eyesore. It's old, it's run down, it's knackered. You know, uh, the taxi rank is hopeless. They've closed off loads of streets, so you can't access it from, from anywhere but one place. It's hopeless. Now, there's lessons to be learned from this, uh, Mike, which is that, you know, if they do a future big project like this, they have oh, to please, think it not, through and they have to work out ideas. exactly what they're going to do before they actually start demolishing places and ripping people's lives apart. Yeah, I know. I mean, Chris, it is incredible, isn't it, that this government... I mean, I don't want to make it too political for you unless you wish to make it so, but, I mean, they've come up with this plan to build this high-speed rail system, which is literally the worst project I think I've ever seen. It's hopeless. I don't know any part of it that's actually working. Do you? No, I suppose the protests are having some sort of an effect, but, I mean, this is the highest uh, spending... Uh, government sort of decision that's ever been made mm. and the fact that it's been implemented so utterly incompetently really does raise questions about uh, how many other government schemes have actually gone ahead on the basis of cost underestimations like yeah. this because i guarantee you it's not just take us two it's going to be very well, i was, at, I, was at, at um, level. Um, I was at a defense uh, meeting with lots of defense people yesterday and they mm. said if you think hs2 is bad you should look at defence procurement. It's actually <laughs> worse. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, we're the people that have got an aircraft carrier with no aircraft on it, I think, uh, apart from anything else. But what, <laughs> about, yes. what about Andy Burnham and his plan? What does he want to do? He seems to think that he uh, might be able to fund this some other way. What does he mean by that? Well, he means by uh, the private sector. And, and I can tell you, you might get a few bob from the private sector and uh, you might be able to kind of do... Uh, little bits, but there's no way that you can fund a, a scheme like this uh, through the private sector because there's no investment return on it is ever going right. to be made. And the same goes for Euston. I mean, Euston is now supposed to be funded by the private sector. And I've talked to a lot of private sector people about this, and they say there is absolutely no chance that you can generate the profits from running the line through to Euston of you know something like four or five billion that you would need to build the line and the, and the associated mm. tunnel. So uh, you know I'm I'm afraid that you know it, it's well and good. It's uh, nice to see uh, a Tory mayor working with a Labour mayor and trying to get something done, but I'm afraid the task is probably just above them. Yeah, it really is. It's an absolute shambles. But uh, Christian, thank you very much indeed. Final word to you, Chris. Um, have any of your sort of other friends moved away as well, just because there's really no point in living? Uh, in Litchfield anymore? Uh, not that I know of. Um, I seem to be the rare exception, mm. but uh, I suppose my case is a rather particular one, is that I don't have a car right. and I have to rely on bus transport to get there. Right. Um, so I'm sort of at the mercy of the existing uh, transport infrastructure. Yeah. Yeah, bad luck. I mean, you might have to change that as we go <laughs> forward because I'm afraid the transport infrastructure is just going to get worse. Thanks very much to both of you. Chris Wilkinson there, uh, Christian Walmart as well. We'll talk to you both again soon, I'm sure.